yourself entering the forest. I'd like to ask you to imagine the sounds, the sounds you're going to hear through your imagination. Imagine a flock of birds flocking just on top of you, passing by. Imagine hearing the rustling of leaves, some from behind you, some on top, some nearby. Imagine hearing a frog right to the left, not very far, not very near. Far to the right, imagine hearing a wolf. You're not threatened because he's far. However, suddenly you can hear a snake not far from you, quickly chasing a rodent. That startles you, of course. That's sound in 3D. That's exactly how you hear sound in real life. If you go home and you have speakers or headphones, you cannot reproduce that reality right now, at least not until re recently. What you hear is sound in the speakers. If your parents have surround sound, you might hear it from around the speakers, from around the room, but never close to you. If in the forest, a fly comes close or a bee or a wasp around your head, you cannot reproduce that at home right now. If you put speakers, unfortunately the sound is all in your head. You cannot get that wolf in the back. You cannot reproduce sound in reality. So that's 3D sound. 3D sound is to get sound reproduced exactly how you hear it in real life. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about myself and connect what I've done to 3D sound. My name is Eddie and uh, my big passions are music, engineering, physics, and mathematics. In space, I grew up in the space age. I wanted to be involved in the space program. I'm also a very bad musician. As a matter of fact, my friends would rather I put bad musician on my business card so I don't subject anybody to, to my uh, bad playing of the guitar or piano. Because I'm a bad musician, I started recording sound. Now, my, big my other passions, I was, able I was lucky enough to be able to realize. Um, I'm a professor in university. I have a laboratory where I work on space. I developed with my graduate students wonderful little rockets called plasma rockets that get strapped on a spacecraft, and the spacecraft can travel very deep in, in your solar system. That was my dream since I was a kid. However, realizing my frustration in, uh, of music has been very difficult. So I started recording musicians. And I realized after a while that while I can record the sound very nicely, where the sound comes from is never correct. We in the forest experiment we did together, where the sound is located is, but is as important as wh what the sound is. If the wolf is very far, your brain relaxes and can enjoy the sound. But millions of years of programming, of evolution, your head is an excellent computer to look what's located in the sound. So I wanted to transfer this to technology. What I have in my hand is a little speaker, which was developed uh, by a company called uh, uh, Jawbone, called Jambox. Some of you have seen it. And uh, uh, an invention that was developed in my lab is now inside here. When you turn it on, and you take your iPod or iPad and play Forest and put that right in front of you. And suddenly, I'm hearing birds flying on top of me. I'm hearing a wolf. I'm hearing frogs. And if a fly comes or a wasp, wasp goes around my head, I will hear it right going around my head, all from a speaker held in my hand. How could that be possible? I can also play music. <laughs> uh, that could be possible because I pretty much use your brain as the computer, as the supercomputer that, that it is. All I've done is created a digital technology that would allow these two speakers, only two speakers right here, to send to your brain the right information for it to decode and put sounds in 3D. As a matter of fact, I did not invent this, it existed before, called crosstalk cancellation, a fancy name for really very natural and very powerful technology. But until recently, it was very difficult uh, to get the sound clearly through those uh, filters. Filter is a way of processing the sound uh, digitally. So I was able to take some mathematical techniques from my plasma physics and spacecraft propulsion fields 
as an engineering scientist and physicist and transport them to solve a problem that allows this technology that existed for 30, 40 years to become so transparent and so natural so when you play sounds, you can get all the inf information your brain needs to hear in 3D. So let's imagine what we can use it for. Imagine playing a game right now, a video game, where you can get sounds coming fr from all around you. More importantly, if you couple the, uh, the uh, 3D video with uh, 3D audio or 3D sound, you can now imagine a fly coming out of the screen, not only circling your head, but if you happen to be demented enough to want to scare people, you can make it go inside your ear, buzz around your head, come up in the other ear. <laughs> or if you are more, if you are more peaceful-minded, you can get somebody to come out of, the, out of the screen and give you a light kiss on the cheek. Not only you can see the person in the 3D video right now coming out of the screen, but you can actually hear that person come whisper in your ear, all from two speakers on your laptop. That's totally possible right now. And uh, speaking of 3D, the technology I'm talking about, many of you s might be wondering how does it work. Actually, it works exactly the same way 3D video works. 3D video works by putting glasses on so that your right eye sees the uh, right picture or a picture intended for it, and the left eye sees the left picture or a picture intended for it. And then the brain, supercomputer that it is, does the rest. Exactly what I do right here. The filter I develop allows each speaker to send negative and not positive pressure waves such that only what's on the right channel of the recording is heard by the right ear, and only what the left channel is on the left ear, everything else gets canceled by negative and pressure waves interacting with each other. Sounds very complicated, but at the end of the day, all that it does, it allows your brain to get the exact cues that it gets in a forest or if it's standing in front of a band at a concert. So this technology can have application as mundane as listening to music. So now instead of listening to music where musicians are between two speakers only, musicians can be anywhere in the room. So if you're a composer, not only now you can compose sound using rhythm, melody, and uh, uh, the uh, actual instrument instrumentation and the colors of, of this, of this, um, of this uh, sound, but you can actually locate the sound source itself. You can write a composition where a singer comes and circles around your head and flies to infinity. And you can write a symphony where it includes uh, violins flying on top of your head or things even happening under your feet. If you are doing teleconferencing, you can imagine recreating in a room uh, the exact location of people as they speak. This is what, what uh, I've worked on, and I have a little demo which you can hear at lunch in a small room called Classroom B nearby. You can ho hold these, uh, this small speaker in front of your head and hear the forest I told you about, hear water go around, around your head and hear your favorite band playing in front of you. Thank you for your attention and see you at lunch.